Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Also with you. 
Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the, in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please read with me Psalm 34, responsibly by half verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. His, His praise, praise shall ever, ever be in my mouth. mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let, Let us exalt, exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and, and let not your faces, faces be ashamed. ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he, and he will deliver them. them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. <coughs> Happy, Happy are they who trust in him. him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear them. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Doesn't this sound like the perfect invitation to Holy Eucharist? It encompasses the physicality of receiving the body and blood of Christ and the goodness of the Lord with the role that trust in God plays in our transformation. St. Augustine affirms that we will be transformed as we receive the Holy Eucharist. He writes that if we receive the Eucharist worthily, we become what we have received. Instead of food becoming absorbed into our bodies so that it is indistinguishable from us, the Holy Eucharist changes us. It shapes us and helps us to grow more like Christ from the inside out. We can also learn how to become more Christ-like from the outside in by following St. Paul's advice to the Ephesians. He suggests that they be imitators of God as beloved children and to live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us and bought a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. As we prayerfully read and learn scripture, we begin to know God and to see how he acts in the world through Christ. To imitate God is to imitate Christ, the incarnation of God. Jesus is God's revelation to us of what God is like and who he is. Jesus is the embodiment of love. Jesus' words, which we heard at the end of last week's gospel passage, ring in our ears again today. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. God beckons us to come to the source of life, Jesus, who will transform our lives. God invites us to experience the fullness of Christ by believing in him, by being nourished in him, and by trusting in his goodness. Some of the crowd who had experienced the miraculous feeding of the 5,000, who had tracked down Jesus the day before, and who had so hungered for the bread that Jesus offered that they pled, please give us this bread always, now seems to turn on Jesus. After all their remarkable experiences, it's hard to fathom how they couldn't grasp who Jesus is. But their faith hasn't taken root. Their fascination with Jesus is based simply on being fed. They assume that they knew Jesus, 
because they knew his family and had watched him grow up. This prevented them from seeing what God was doing in and through Jesus right in front of their very eyes. Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Don't you hate it when people try to pigeonhole you just because they think that they know all about you? They may have gone to first grade with you or spent a night at your house a couple of nights, and they base all their assumptions on these few experiences. Or they may know your parents or your siblings and then assume that they know who you are. I can remember people looking at me knowingly and saying, oh, you must be a McBride. It can be maddening and so limiting. The folks who were questioning Jesus' identity wanted to keep him in his place, the place that they decided he belonged. Jesus responded not with animosity, though, but with generosity. He doesn't cut them off, but he keeps offering them the bread of heaven, living bread that through him gives life to the world. Jesus' love is expansive and inclusive. He is ready and willing to share the gift of eternal life with all who believe in him. Jesus entices the crowd to think differently, to put aside their preconceived notions. Whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. He speaks, he speaks the truth of their lives to them, holding up this mirror of their reality. And he offers a new way of being. Their challenge is to let go of the flawed assumptions they hold so dear. To consider what they know of God and then be open to seeing God in more expansive light. That may be our challenge as well. How often do we get stuck on a belief that we don't realize is only part of God's truth? It may cause us to stop probing, to stop wondering. When we hold on too tightly to a belief or to an assumption, fully convinced that what we know is all there is to know about what God is doing in any given situation, we may not even see Jesus who is standing right in front of us, who stands among us and offers us so much more. Jesus offers us eternal life, a new way of being in Christ's presence here and now. St. Paul instructs the people of Ephesus in ways that reflect Christ's love. He calls on them and us thousands of years later to be imitators of God, to speak truthfully and lovingly, to forgive, to speak words that build up the body of Christ rather than to tear it down, to put away bitterness, wrath, anger, and slander, and to be kind to one another. The challenge in being imitators of Christ is that Christ acts in love always. He doesn't blow off people in anger, but is patient. The words he uses are meant to build up to instruct, to challenge us, but they were always spoken in truthful love. As hard as it is to hear what sounds like criticism from Jesus, we can always trust that what he says is for our growth and our benefit. He himself is the bread of life, and he offers himself to give life to the world. He embodies sacrificial love, our challenge is to respond in love and to, be a, and to be willing to make sacrifices for the good of our communities. Our challenge is to be imitators of Christ because the bar is set impossibly high. <laughs> Jesus' teaching and life-giving love brings us closer to the kingdom of God. He is the true bread from heaven. What Jesus offers us is eternal life, a life that is consciously lived in the presence of God. 
So may we throw off the blinders that prevent us from seeing the wondrous ways that God acts through Jesus here and now. May we be nourished by the bread of life and be transformed by Jesus' transformative love, that we may imitate Christ by acting in love towards everyone we encounter. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray that you will watch over, guide, and protect our armed forces and all those in harm's way at home or abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Harry Noyce and family, Ron Stimson, Donna Abramoff and family, Jean Babcock, Babcock Vicki Braun and family, Carolyn Thompson and family, Ed Tynes and family, Riley, Grant Goodrich, Barbara Yokos, Claudette Brawley and family, Julia Taylor, Karen Bates, Linda Marie Rice, Tom Cheney, Mary Lee Whipple, and all those who we now name either silently or aloud. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for the staff, teachers, and students of Grace Episcopal School. We pray for those who celebrate their birthday this week. Lily Cost Costran, Beth Dye, 
Jared Haynes, Sophie Kleppner, Victoria Phillips, Austin Cook, John Wilson, Madeline Winstead, Paige Times, Linda Berryman, Richard Mayo Sr., Kevin Ross, Alex Clements, Scott Crash, Jan Worth, and for those who celebrate their anniversary this week, Tom and Jean Pettit, Howard and Judy McKinney. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Margaret Noyes, Pete Abramov, Dale Brown, Braun, Jack Thompson, Gail Tynes, Angie Franchek, Tom Sheehan, and all those who we now name either silently or aloud. That your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. At this time, I invite any additional intercessions or thanksgiving from the congregation, either silently or aloud. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We, we confess that, that we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with a whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also and with you. you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace. peace. Thank you, musicians, for your lovely music. Thank you, Anne, for your camera work. We welcome you if you are visiting us for the first time online. We're glad to have you with us. There is a virtual coffee hour following the service and the link is in the e-news, e-weekly. We have one more chance to put your input into the listening sessions with the architects. That's Sunday, this today after the 11 o'clock service, so it's at 12.30 via Zoom. The link should be in the eWeekly. Gather your thoughts, your ideas, your visions for New West and participate this afternoon if you are able. We have our Stuff the Truck event coming up. We already started this past Saturday. We have another one August 12th at Central from 10 until noon. So I hope that you will help us, help our neighbors have enough food and bring food items and toiletries and various things like that to Central at 10 o'clock between 10 and noon. It will all be delivered the following Saturday. That's Thursday the 12th. We continue with our evening prayer at four o'clock every day except Tuesdays. We have our healing service in person at noon at West on Wednesdays, and that service is uploaded, so it will be the service at four o'clock. So I hope you will join us for all these ways to continue to pray together, even when we are apart. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate in the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death. death. We, we proclaim, proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Christ, the bread of heaven. and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
duties to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Be Thanks to God. God. Thank you.